So, uh, we are continuing with the, the draw texturing and uh, we did understand that why the draw texturing was needed and what actually is the draw texturing. The barre which actually result after you make some fabrics after dyeing, why does it happen, what type of barre we encounter, uh, sequential and simultaneous draw texturing and in the case of simultaneous draw texturing problems associate with using an undrawn yarn, the aging, migration leading to poor tenacity and threading related issues. We will try to see if we use high speed spinning. We said that last time we were using fibers being spun at around 500 to 700 meters per minute. If instead of that you use high speed spinning, what happens to the residual draw of a resultant yarn and also the yarn that is produced which is not fully oriented, not fully drawn, but probably has been oriented more, how does it behave? for the purpose of texturing. So, looking at simultaneous draw texturing with a POY called a partially oriented yarn. So, we remember that there was a poor migration and if the draw ratio in an undrawn yarn remained the same, so some of the yarns were getting drawn more than the others. So, one thing people had suggested in general is that uh, the draw ratio could be reduced let us say by 5, 7 percent or maybe 10 percent, so that none of the filament is overdrawn. Otherwise, you can actually have a broken uh, filament also. So, that is as far as the simultaneous draw texturing was concerned and we had the problems related to that. If we increase the speed of spinning, all right, and plot spinning speed versus residual draw ratio. Residual draw ratio means that if you have an undrawn yarn for example, whatever and you were trying to work and then this finally takes up this shape. So, this much draw you have to give before a useful product is made because this change is a permanent change and you will not allow any textile material which is useful material to have this type of a change which is permanent and you always want change which is recoverable change. Right. So, that if you extend a yarn, it should be able to come back. So, the same type of stress strain curve. So, this is the draw ratio which you may have to give if suppose you want to make a fully drawn yarn after you have spun the material, so that it becomes like a regular usable material. So, that is what if you plot versus spinning speed, let us say this is about 700 meters per minute, the draw to be residual for example, in this type of yarn could be close to 3.5 or more. So, this is not an absolute value that I am giving, but approximately because based on the molecular weight, based on everything else, all these things can change. You start increasing the speed around 3000 meters, the residual draw is less. That means, when you increase the spinning speed, the melt that is coming from the spinneret is being pulled faster and because of this there is 
some amount of orientation taking place during this process of spinning itself. And if orientation takes place is means that if you really want to extend there is a limitation and the limitation is that you will be able to not not able to go up to let us say 300 percent stretch not a stretch extension value. And so that extension value or which we now also approximately say as the residual draw will keep on getting reducing because the material is getting oriented during spinning itself. So that is what uh, this curve shows that if you start increasing the speed the residual draw can go down somewhere around it may be 1.5 or 1.7. So, this could be the range based on whatever kind of material they will produce that the draw ratio required to make it fully drawn will reduce. Why? because some of the molecules during the spinning have been oriented. Of course, if you still increase the speed almost up to 6000, you can actually get almost a fully drawn yarn. You do not need to draw it further. So, those experiments have been also done, but the material that has that is produced at this speed probably is not considered to be as good as a material which is drawn after spinning all right so the the development of a morphology is slightly different but what was interesting was from a stage which was almost like a undrawn yarn to a fully drawn yarn you were getting reduction in the residual draw. So, one can stop anywhere for that matter and this type of a curve is for almost all melt spun fibers because this kind of speeds are never used for wet spun fibers or solvent dry spun fibers. So, this was melt spinning. So, if you are somewhere around 3000 meters, you get a material which has a residual draw quite reduced, but not fully drawn uh, about 1.5 to 1.7 all right. So, nylon may have different, polyester may have different, different types of polyester may have different thing, but you are getting some. This type of a yarn was therefore called a partially oriented yarn. That is, it is not fully oriented but during spinning some orientation is taking place. It is interesting that this yarn obviously one reason is that you want to have more production and therefore you want to get to this. But this yarn has beautiful properties, much better than the undrawn yarn you buy. And therefore, the people from the texturing industry liked it very much and you will be surprised that at this during this time the research and development units and research universities as also the machinery manufacturers spinning as also the machinery manufacturing texturing they were all collaborating. So, this is one of the very successful stories of collaborations where everybody respected the others viewpoint and the limitations. So, what happened the moment let us say I am talking at the moment of uh, polyester. The storage stability of this material called a POI which may have been spun at 3000 or 3200, 3400 meters per minute improved tremendously. That is from one week to three months that is this material could be stored at the normal temperature humidity conditions which are available 
and so you would not see any deterioration of properties during this storage which means that after spinning you can supply to anyone who wants to use this and that was a big thing and the stability has come from the morphology which has changed and instead of being totally unoriented structure it is an oriented structure and therefore it is more stable stable to the environmental conditions you know right not only that this material was also stable on the heater like when you are threading the yarn over the heater it would not fuse it was stable so you can immediately uh, very easily thread this system machine and then run and after that everything happens like a draw texturing so two important things happen one that it would not fuse on the heater and also you could store it for a longer period remember you talking about polyester at the moment the crystallinity as we said stress induced crystallinity of this material was very low very low 2 to 5% you remember the crystallinity of a fully drawn yarn is somewhere around of a polyester about 27 25% and this material has only 2 to 5% crystallinity if we recall our earlier discussions that lesser is the crystallinity of a parent yarn because this will become the parent yarn now is better for us that mean total energy barrier is less and you can do the things better and immediately go to a next stage which will be more stable stage state uh, because of low crystallinity the orientation of this yarn is relatively higher which is evident from the reduced draw ratio residual draw ratio and therefore compared to the undrawn yarn is performance is likely to do better after texturing because starting with the material which is better oriented material and that also we said that higher is the orientation better for us but we will never say that this orientation is equal to a fully oriented yarn this is less definitely but compared to the undrawn yarn it's much better then we did talk about migration because of this orientation that happens because the fact that the residual draw is less therefore the migration is improved this is the migration of filaments during twisting you will never say that it has become equal to again with a fully drawn yarn so it may not be equal to fully drawn yarn but it's much much superior to an undrawn yarn which just extends at a very very low stress this requires more stress to get extended and therefore the chances of migration of surface to the core filaments is higher so from that point of view again Uh, this proposition was a good one that you have something called a POY polyester yarn which can be used for texturing false is texturing and that also draw texturing and that also simultaneous draw texturing performance from the barre point of view improved because again you are dealing with large doffs coming straight from the spinning so
So it's a POY, so large drops, 5 kilograms, 7 kilograms, big drops. And so that issue of position to position variation or uh, every hour, every two hours variation, those kind of things obviously get reduced as long as you have some control and obviously you should have control on your machine. In fact, the interesting thing was that the moment POY came into picture, the texturing industry which was texturizing nylon as also polyester. Nylon is a fiber which came earlier and obviously it was predominating. After this, scenarios changed completely. It was polyester all the way. And one of the reason was this and of course this. So people said, well, uh, this is it. So it so happened that the POY polyesters were made early than the nylon. And one of the reason why it was difficult for them to immediately make and commercialize nylon uh, POY was that whatever polymer that they were spinning at that time and the whatever the machines they obviously were spinning on had difficult controlling the thread line stability of a melt. So as a molten material which is coming, which has to solidify somewhere in between and then wound. And winding at higher speed means vibrations. And so additional vibrations, the polymer being whatever it is, the stresses developing in the melt thread line would cause breakages, instability and that was something which delayed the commercialization or commercial product of a POY nylon for that matter. More than that, in our group we have polypropylene also. Polypropylene is relatively much easier to spin compared to nylon and polyester. If you happen to see any of those spinning units, the nylon polyester may almost be on two to three story spinning systems while this could be done in one single story because of the properties of the polypropylene that loves to crystallize very easily. The rate of crystallization, if you look at it, these three fibers from the melt. Polyester is the slowest because of its aromatic structure. The rate of crystallization is very slow. So for some it may be looking at a negative point. For the POY production people it was the most positive point. For the people who were wanting to texturize it was a very positive point. Compared to polyester, nylon crystallizes more. The rate of crystallization is higher here. We talk about both nylon 6 and nylon 6x. Polypropylene, which of course is an isotectic polypropylene, which is the textile grade material. The rate of crystallization is very high. If you remember, we said the crystallinity also is very high of a fully drawn material, polypropylene because the chain folding takes place very easily. So good for something, but if you look at the stress strain behavior of the POY, so this residual draw ratio obviously reduced and then finally you can get this material as far as if you want a flat yarn to be desired. The same yarn we can use it for the simultaneous draw texturing. But when they checked the, finally of course you could handle all these instabilities in spinning line, spinning thread line and you start making nylon. They found the stress strain curve of a nylon is like this. Residual draw may be still there and you still have to draw it. But look at the difference of the two. What did this show? 
it shows that it is taking the resistance from the word go. There is no so much of a free, free plastic flow. Of course, if you stretch or extend to the final point, it will get extended to the extent of whatever residual draw is. So, this indicates that this material is already crystalline while it is being spun. And therefore, people also said, well, if it, if it is crystallizing even at 2000 meters per minute, if it starts crystallizing at such a low speed, so you do not want to go to low speed. So, they started also spinning nylon at a relatively higher speed, not even 3500, they could go even to 4000, because it has to crystallize anyway. So, and that type of material could be used for another process, which is called a spin drawing. That is, as you are spinning, couple the drawing with it, a spin draw technology and get a fully drawn fiber. At this point, you may just remember that it is assumed or believed that you first do make a POI and then do the drawing is a better idea than a fully drawn yarn by increasing the spinning speed. So, nylon people said, well, we will go and for a higher spinning speed, but not 6000, 4000, it is crystallizing, does not matter, but we can get a spin draw yarn. Normally, a spin draw yarn is used for tire cords also. Similarly, when they saw a curve for polypropylene also was a similar curve. So, it was also not showing any. So, the first common sense issue was that let us use polyester. Polyester today is obviously used maximum for all kinds of things. And so, from the point of view of texturing, this is the material that you want to use. And from this point onwards, if you look at the history, it is the POY polyester which is the maximum use and is number one as far as the texturing is concerned. Of course, you can texturize POY polypropylene, you can texturize nylon because some advantage in terms of the bare was there in all of all the cases, nylon definitely. So, POY has come to stay as a material and Another advantage people also saw that when you are drawing during texturing itself, so whenever even if the necking zone is not the best necking zone, neck point is not the best necking point, still there is a pull and a push which happens and because of that some adiabatic changes in terms of temperature rise, right. If you do any kind of a pull, so at the molecular level there is a friction and because of that adiabatic, adiabatically uh, the temperature can rise which will be advantage to during the heating process also. So, no one has any doubt that POY should be used. All of them have residual draw despite this stress strain curve being different. So, they are not fully drawn yarn. So, there was a material challenge which came because we wanted to do simultaneous draw texturing and we wanted to avoid barre and so on and so forth. The material challenge which was creating difficulties in texturing, has it been solved? We will say to yes to some extent, to actually large extent, yes. Can we now perform simultaneous draw texturing? Yes. So, this is where also we are there. 
Is there a challenge posed by texturing machine? Machine at that time, the POY had already come. Machine was pin texturing machine. So remember, when we did agree to go for simultaneous or sequential draw texturing, we were aware that the drawing speeds were higher, around 700 to 1000 meters per minute. The texturing speeds were not so high. So, at least simultaneous draw texturing had reduced one process and you were going through the whole process. And so, people had stopped thinking about sequential draw texturing where you are actually going fully drawn and after that more crystallinity and then more time and all uh, thing was stopped and so you go for this machine, this material and the machine was pin texturing. Was this machine posing a challenge? Yes. The material challenge and now the machine challenge. And what is this challenge? Just for getting a perspective. So, this is a pin or a spindle. And there is a spindle arm of the twister. But the twister is the whole assembly. So, you have a spindle and there is a twister. And the twister assembly has this arm is resting on two discs. So, one disc moves, the other disc moves, and because of that, the spindle arm also moves. So, like we said last time, that well, it rotates at the same RPM, uh, the pin, and the same RPM would be of the yarn at that particular point. But the control is happening here, there are no gears, right? You probably will have difficulty in finding getting to 10 raised to 5 and 10 raised to 6 kind of an RPM with using some kind of a gear. It is a floating spindle, it is a floating spindle. And how is it being held? So, there is a plate which is a let us say a magnetic plate and there is a magnetic material and so it is being pulled towards that plate and so it is held in position that is floating. Other side you look at, so there are two pairs of discs, one holding the top arm, other holding the bottom arm of the spindle. So, these are the discs. And the pin of course is here as we had seen before, this is the pin and you are rotating. Now, how you can think that they were actually working on the machines at 300, 320, 25 meters per minute and the spindle was supposed to have been rotating at the speeds at 10 to 5, 10 to 6 rpm. It is very high speed. That too of material which just floats. So, if there are vibrations of any kind, it can jump off. If it jumps off, there is a break. How fast can you rotate this? You can rotate it by reducing the diameter of the arm or increasing the diameter of the disc. If you increase the diameter of this, there is a position the whole spindle will take somewhere on the machine will keep increasing. It is the number of things that you can place in one line on one side will reduce and of course, there is a mass which also will increase. This spindle actually was an engineering marvel, a very sturdy material with a hollow arm which is rotating at a very high speed and running for hours together. 
So reducing the hollow tube further, the bulb is all right. The hollow tube further was very, very difficult. And if you make it thin, you yarn still has to pass through. It's not solid, so you got to give some space. You would not like to have too much of friction between the yarn and the arm of the spindle. Because, but in any case, they said this is the limit, limit of twisting. So the machine was not giving a problem that you can't wind it faster, you can't feed faster, but you can't rotate it faster. And what speed we are still talking about is 300 meters per minute. And you say you would like to match up with the drawing machine, which we are running at 1000 meters or 700 meters. You try to do that, then you are looking at values which are higher. Lot of vibrations, spindle jumping off at the whatever limits that could make and therefore, he said, well, speeds cannot be increased. So that was the limitation. So you go for a simultaneous draw texturing, material is the one which responds very well, it's locust line material or even if nylon polyester we are talking about, nylon polypropylene we are talking about the crystallinity developed during the spinning is not alpha crystals, right? They are crystals with less stability, less stable crystal crystalline form and therefore they are still good, right? So nylon would form large amount of gamma crystals, right? Polypropylene will form more smectic type of structure, which of course will go to the alpha as you heat it up and work around. So the materials were good as far as all the POYs were good. So material challenge was taken off, taken care of, but the machine challenge was there. That's the time when people started saying, talking about friction texturing. So just to recall again, how is the pins spindle rotated? They were two, they were rested. The arms of the thing were resting on two pairs of suitably rotating discs. Discs, of course, were rotating on pivots and some drive, positive drives. Radius of the disc versus radio spindle was an issue. So you could reduce as much as you could. And this simple equation which says that the ratio of the radii would determine the RPM of the spindle. Needless to mention, the discs are rotating obviously at slow RPM and the spindle is rotating at a higher RPM. In some sense, this was also friction because there were no gears. So the surface of the disc, the friction between the surface of the disc and the arm of the spindle is responsible for all rotation, all right? But they are rigid bodies, both are rigid bodies. And there was a force which we pulled up, which are pulling the spindle. And so we called it a positive twisting mechanism. So the slippage between the spindle and the disc was considered or assumed to be almost zero because the weight was not high and they are rigid bodies. Just that we could not change the dimensions more, therefore we couldn't do. But this is not called friction texturing. What people said is why have a spindle? We already know that the spindle is also rotating because of friction. Why should we not put the yarn directly on the disc? So immediate advantage is the dimension of a yarn, whatever the yarn you choose versus that of a disc, the difference is tremendous and therefore Suddenly, theoretically, you almost said whatever limits of twisting you want can be done. So, you do not have to worry about the dimension of the spindle at all. 
whatever the yarn, just put it on the disc, it starts moving. So, this principle was obviously loved and that is if you use this kind of a principle, then you call it friction texturing. Although the pin was also rotating by some friction, but you do not call that as a friction texturing. The friction texturing is the one where yarn is directly put on a rotating body. So, principle was good, people said yes, very nice. This is how the machinery manufacturers were following the problems of the texturing machinery. Spinning machinery people had given a material which is good. Now, texturing machinery manufacturers had to do something and also these kind of tests and experiments were also being done in the research institutions. So, that you do testing and say what exactly happens. So, suddenly you seem to be solving the problem. There is something called internal frictional devices. So, initially people said that unfortunately a textile yarn is not a rigid body and therefore, if you just believe that there is a disc and there is this yarn and this yarn will always remain at this position while the disc is moving in this direction. It is not a good expectation, not a rigid body, flexible system. So, it can actually go in this direction also and start like a ballooning. So, I said okay, we can have a device like internal frictional device, so various kinds of devices they would try. So, what says it cannot go out because you will be uh, drawing this yarn from one end to the other end through this uh, orifice, which is good enough, which has a friction. So, yarn will be touching that, this rotates, the yarn will rotate and hopefully you have better control. It is not going to go anywhere else because you are going to pulling in the other direction. So, I am not saying this at the moment. I like you to just consider if this is the kind of a device that you have to run, design a system where this device will be rotating the way you want it to rotate, all right. It has to rotate. So, just do not have to give answer just now. Go back and see this is a device which must rotate so that whatever you want can happen. So, it is an engineering solution have to be found out for this purpose itself. You can do it at home. These devices were given up earlier early in the day and thought that we should go for external frictional device only. And the yarn can be here. They said we will rotate, no, said we can easily provide guides. If the yarn is guided, let us say here, then it may not be able to go too much away from the positions. This was interesting. So, the external frictional devices, which are these days also called friction discs, are the ones which are the twisting units in any modern false Swiss texturing machine. So, from a normal texturizing system, now you have simultaneous draw texturing as also friction texturing. So, when you say friction texturing, that means the yarn is actually on the disc directly being rotated. So, interestingly, the difference in diameter is too much and therefore, how fast can you rotate is not a question at all. So, this is friction texturing where Hopefully, the yarn is in contact 
if the yarn is in contact then it should rotate but if you look at this diagram you will not be very comfortable all right so one of the most important challenge that came immediately the moment you said we are we have solved the problem of twist and limit of twist you said well yarn is flexible whatever you do is fine we would have more problems but even if the problems we solve at a later stage what has changed time would still remain a processing parameter temperature will remain a processing parameter but now there is a draw ratio the yarn is not fully drawn it's a poy so you have to draw while you are texturing so what are you doing you are drawing and texturing so there is a draw ratio so draw ratio is one of the parameters which has to be controlled process parameter now which is similar to tension not exactly but similar to tension after when you increase the draw ratio tension in the yarn is going to increase then they also said ki another parameter will be called a d by y ratio the speed of the disk versus the speed of the yarn ratio of these two how fast you are running the yarn through the machine and how fast you are rotating the disk this was related to twist that is he said why did you do that you just said twist and he said well this is called the friction texturing i have no control on the actual twist being inserted in the yarn because i am not measuring i have no way to measure in the case of a pin you had a something called a twist wheel it has a number of gears something is coming from input from one side output from the other side it is driving something else that surface speed is known the disk surface speed is known the surface speed of the arm is known and therefore i know what twist i am inserting that was called positive control on the twist you come to this point he says i don't know i am not twisting the yarn at all so there is nothing called a spindle yarn is rotating indirectly through the disk but i am quite sure how fast the disk is rotating and i have a control i also have a control that how fast the yarn will go through the machine and hopefully the ratio of this would have something to do with the twist but i will still not talk about twist i will only talk about d by y ratio some other parameters also came into play tension was always important we said draw ratio we are doing tension we said no you should measure it also now measure the tension before you have fed the yarn to the disk on the twister and after it has come out of the twister is the tension same yeah you can always calculate but no they found this is not a simple case of a yarn moving over a disk the yarn is moving over a disk it is also rotating simultaneously and therefore you should measure t1 and t2 right tension initial tension input tension and output tension so this becomes another parameter we should be worried about now as i said if the yarn is going absolutely straight just just like that the way it's been shown the life will be very different you may actually not see any twist this is a point contact but the point contact is not good enough so i say well okay we will wrap it around the disk so there's a wrap angle of wrap comes into picture all right angle of wrap so you have additional thing called t1 additional thing called t2 these terminologies have changed 
and you have angle of wrap. You can appreciate if the yarn has tension and there is an angle of wrap, there is a normal force, right? And if there is a normal force and friction, then obviously torque can be generated. If you do not have that, you can have as much friction as you want without a normal force, what to do? So, you have to do wrapping and wrapping means some angle of wrap which could be this. If the yarn is moving like this, so wherever this is making this, this is the angle which can be called as the angle of wrap. So, you are solving problems, but you also must understand one thing you have lost on the way, you have no positive control on the twist. You have indirect control which is not positive. So, we can stop here and next time we will go move further from here. Thank you.